Welcome to Creating Safe Spaces. My name is Ashley M. And my name is Ashley W. This program deals with some sensitive topics about online harassment and ways you can free yourself from it to create an environment that lifts you up rather than harms you. Feel free to jump straight to the information you need, though we hope the information throughout this program is helpful. There will not be any cursing or images that are unsafe, but as we mentioned in the previous slide, this program will cover difficult topics like abusive language and bullying. Please be mindful of your well-being before viewing this content. All right, Ashley, do you want to go over some safety tips with our viewers? Sure. I think most of us know the basic warning signs and how to protect yourself online, but they do warrant mentioning because they're your first line of defense. Online friends are real friends, but just like real friends, they may not always be your friends. So be careful of the information you share about your real life, such as where you live and when you're leaving for vacation or posting images that can tag your location. Update your privacy settings on social media regularly so you know what you're sharing and with whom. Also remember that others can take snapshots of your Snapchats or other social media posts. All right, so troll or threat. How can you tell if someone is just being a quote unquote troll online or if they are a real threat? Generally, trolls will leave outrageous comments and then hopefully move on. Not responding can sometimes be enough to dissuade them. However, if you get caught up in a back and forth conversation with excessive swearing and insults, then it's possible this user might be a problem later on. But even situations that begin as online friendships might have unforeseen difficulties later on. We're going to go over things to look out for when you start engaging with people online. As we mentioned, if someone is hurling abuse at you, that is pretty obvious. However, there are other things to be aware of. Aside from the language on the public side, if someone starts messaging you privately or in your DMs with inappropriate content, that is definitely a red flag. Yep. Furthermore, if they start approaching you across multiple social media platforms, seeking you out specifically, especially if you've tried to say you're not interested in interacting with them, that's also a warning sign. And if you continue to ignore them or try not to engage and they start sending you threats of any kind, that is beyond a red flag at that point. <laughs> yeah. While these basic warning signs are key examples of bad online behavior, sometimes it can take different forms depending on what type of harassment you're experiencing. So there are several types that we're going to go over today. This isn't an all-encompassing list, but it's definitely some of the ones that people encounter frequently, and we'll be giving you a few real-life examples. If you've ever been bullied, these examples may not be new to you. That's because online bullying is similar to in-person bullying, only it's harder for someone else to intervene and the bully has even greater access to you. Calling you names is bullying. Talking about someone else is bullying. Pushing someone else to hurt themselves is definitely bullying. That said, please talk to someone if you've experienced any of these, but especially the last. With the rise in digital learning and virtual conferences that have emerged in the past year or so, we've seen an even more aggressive type of cyberbullying. With so many people using conference software like Zoom or Google Meet to lead classes or host virtual events, a disturbing trend emerged. Some attendees would bomb the chat section of these events, filling it with derogatory language and distracting from the goal of the meetings. While this often happened to presenters, it also sparked some controversy in schools as people who might bother you at school had another incentive to attack online. Thankfully, as people have gotten a better grasp on using virtual conferencing and learning, these incidents have gone down somewhat. The more targeted body shaming would be, for example, if someone is spamming your Instagram posts making cruel or derogatory comments about your body or appearance. This can go either way, where people could say that you're too thin and have an eating disorder, or they could say you're too big and putting your health at risk. It has also caused debate about the difference between body shaming and the body positivity movement. A key example of someone in the media who has come under scrutiny for this is Lizzo. After becoming a hit sensation for her talent, people still couldn't pass up the opportunity to comment about her size, especially due to the types of photos she posts on Instagram that people found provocative or not attractive. What was Lizzo's response, Ashley? Hmm, I don't know. She brushed the dirt off her shoulder. While I'm sure the negativity can take an emotional toll, she and her true friends continue to advocate for herself as someone who is beautiful and confident in her own skin. The lesson from this is to use the support you have around you to build your confidence. People will make comments about everything because there isn't anything to stop them. You, however, have to build up your own resilience to see yourself through those reactions. Don't silence yourself. You have the right to be as vibrant, outgoing, flashy, or fashionable as you feel. You also have the right to be whatever size you are and feel proud about it. 
Doxing often involves collecting someone's personal information and publishing it online. A person or sometimes a whole fan base might justify doing this because of something you said, did, or what they feel you represent. Because of this, they retaliate by supposedly exposing you and using that leverage to make threats. However, this is never your fault or deserved. The Gamergate controversy is a prime example of this. Basically, several women who are prominent working in the video game industry were targeted for their opinions and work. Game developers Zoe Quinn and Brianna Wu faced backlash for daring to stray from video gamers' expectations. And Anita Sarkeensian from Feminist Frequency came under fire due to her YouTube videos on sexism in games. Some video game enthusiasts were so outraged by their views, they started sending these women death threats, including including mentioning where they lived. The online abuse was especially awful because so many of the targeted attacks revolved around gender, implying these women had no place in the gamer space. Thankfully, they didn't take the abuse lying down. They persevered and have gone on to share advice on what you can do about online harassment and doxing. If you search for the official definition of outing in regards to online harassment, it has a similar description to docs. It can be where someone posts private information about someone or tries to blackmail them with that information. However, I want to talk about outing someone in a different sense. Outing can also refer to revealing information about someone's sexuality or gender identity, especially before they are ready to share that information with others. Sometimes this happens unintentionally with friends who let something slip to someone else and might feel awful about it. However, if someone is calling you out about your identity on a public platform, it's definitely harassment. In the boom of online celebrity blogs, this happened often, where bloggers would post about whether or not someone was gay or that they should come out of the closet. These articles spurred users to offer up their own harsh opinions and speculation. And even now, when doing something like this is considered taboo, some people still have the tendency, or audacity rather, to talk about this part of someone's personal journey. It can come across in hurtful, prejudiced comments or mocking someone's pronouns. But no matter what, no one has the right to ridicule you for being you. I think a lot of us have probably encountered the term grooming at this point. There has been a lot of discussion about what it is as well as incidents of prominent figures engaging in this behavior. Grooming can sometimes fall under the online friend category where someone approaches you with seemingly good intentions only to later on ask you for explicit photos or try to meet up in person to further their advances towards you. Although this can happen to anyone, there have been many cases where this has happened between someone who is older or a mentor engaging in this behavior with someone significantly younger than them. Groomers frequently target people they know look up to them or that they think they can easily manipulate. This can even include teachers. Even if you get along with a teacher and might have fond feelings towards them, teachers should not be contacting you on social media platforms, wanting to meet up or commenting about your appearance on your photos. Their job is to help you with your educational growth, and it's important to establish these boundaries. Honestly, there are almost too many real-life examples to list here, from incidents like actual teachers to TikTok influencers and A-list celebrities. This behavior feels like its own pandemic at this point. However, speaking up like many survivors did with the Me Too movement might be healing for you if you've gone through something like this. Okay, on to catfishing. It's also gained widespread attention over the years, especially due to coverage on it from programs like the Catfish TV show. On there, you can see a variety of situations as to how people are roped into online relationships or friendships, and then the person they're talking to is not who they appear to be. Motives for catfishing can range from the truly terrifying, like trying to meet up with someone to take advantage of them, to other people who might feel lonely or are trying to find alternative ways to express themselves. However, regardless of someone's intentions, the impact of being catfished can have on you is still important. Even though seeing incidents of catfishing on TV is often played for humor effect on social media, it can be very traumatizing for the people involved. Online, you can be anyone, but so can everyone else. Keep that in mind when you build relationships with people you can't meet in person. While these attacks can feel scary and overwhelming, there are things you can do to protect yourself. Your first course of action can be to not respond. Sometimes a response is all they need to feel provoked or entitled to keep confronting or approaching you. However, if staying silent doesn't work and the person keeps sending inappropriate messages, you can screenshot it on your computer or take a picture of it on your phone. Documenting these encounters is an important step to do before you block or mute someone, because oftentimes the messages might disappear after you block or mute someone. However, if this person is scaring you, definitely block or mute them, as well as reporting it. Be sure to unfriend them as well.
Okay, so what are the steps you can take to report it? So these social media platforms should definitely have a help section where you can report incidents of abuse or online harassment. You would have to give a description of what happened and hopefully they would also have a space where you can send those screenshots or pictures that you took of the abuse or the person's screen name. Also, you are not alone in experiencing this type of behavior. Don't be afraid to reach out to or confide in someone. If you don't feel safe confiding in a friend or family member, there are also hotline numbers available that can provide you with helpful resources, and we'll share some of those at the end of this presentation. You can also choose to take a social media hiatus, and that way you can disengage completely from any online harassment. If this is someone you see in person, this might not feel like enough. That's where the other steps of letting friends or an authority figure you trust can come in handy. No one can tell you to brush off how bullying or harassment makes you feel, but know that the bullying or harassment isn't about you. You get to make the decisions about yourself without taking a poll to see how others feel about it. Find a support network who will be there for you and be there for yourself as well. These resources listed here can help. We have the self-harm prevention hotline, which is also available via their chat lifeline. There is also another additional hotlines for the deaf or hard of hearing. The Trevor helpline is for those in the LGBTQ community who might be experiencing outing. There are also several websites like stopbullying.gov, stompoutbullying.org, and iHollaback.org. If you're looking for some fun, drama-free outlets online, these are some of the apps that might be fun to play, whether they are a game or have comic books like High School Story or the Novelty apps, or about meditation, or even writing outlets like Wattpad. There's also a book by Eric Smith called Don't Read the Comments, which details the online harassment a gamer girl faces. So you should definitely check that out as well. And we just want to thank you for watching. This presentation was provided by Gwinnett County Public Library and check out the other stuff that's available on the YouTube channel. Have a great day and be safe out there.